Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning everybody. Yesterday we were looking at standing waves and we derived expressions for uh, uh, waves in a closed pipe and open pipe and so on and the way we did this is we uh, converted the partial differential equation into ordinary differential equation and then we uh, tried to solve it by applying the uh, corresponding boundary conditions for a open end we assumed that the fluctuating pressure or the acoustic pressure is 0. For a closed end we said the uh, displacement is 0 and then we um, solve for the uh, constants and then we got the uh, wave fields. Uh, are there any questions? Yeah, so uh, uh, the question is why do we assume P prime is 0 for an open boundary. So if you look at the definition of P prime, P prime is P minus P bar and when I tube is open that means it is open to the atmosphere of the universe. So pressure here would be same as pressure here. So uh, pressure at a open end equal to P atmosphere and since we are saying uh, this is uh, uh, we are not having a base flow and constant mean pressure and all that the pressure here would be P bar itself. So if you say pressure is P bar then you have P bar minus P bar equal to 0. So this is the reason why fluctuating pressure is 0 at the open end. In that case we cannot have waves propagating in atmosphere. Uh, we can so have is. this is a very trick question uh, or a very deep question. So if you, uh, if, if you uh, look at a low frequency wave in a uh, standing wave coming, a uh, very low frequency wave, uh, this entire wave will be reflected that is what we saw it is reflected such that pressure is going to 0. So if you have a uh, uh, wave coming this way it is completely turned around and almost nothing is going out. Uh, so if you really ma make a measurements with a microphone here and compare it with the uh, pressure amplitude here uh, this would be significantly at least one order of magnitude lower than this. Now will it be 0? No there will be some pressure. In fact if you make, uh, if you make sound in a tube you attach a loudspeaker to a uh, tube and if you listen outside you will hear a sound but the thing is inside there will be much more sound. Now the question is how does the sound come out if everything is getting reflected as the theory says right. So here it is a one dimensional wave field and uh, here there is a uh, kind of waves are spreading everywhere. So at the end what did we get? We found that the uh, pressure is 0 but velocity will be maximum okay. So uh, you can think of this. Uh, the gas column at the end right at the end as like a diaphragm which is vibrating back and forth and from there so or the loudspeaker or a piston vibrating back and forth and this is open to the universe or the atmosphere around. So the sound field will radiate in a three dimensional fashion everywhere but it will be radiating at a very poor efficiency at low frequencies. Now the higher the frequencies <coughs> the um, waves would uh, uh, radiate in a more efficient way. So the, you will hear more. Now typically <coughs> the if you do experiments in a standing wave tube uh, you can get uh, of the order of I mean uh, maybe one tenth or something uh, uh, only radiating of the power uh, everything else will be here inside and if you look at the uh, uh, at the minima for example if you look at the expressions uh, 2 cos uh, kx something like that, that is what we get. So in principle the minima should come to 0 the pressure should hit the maxima go to a minima and then come back to a maxima. So the minima is 0 according to the formula but nevertheless you never reach 0 you will get a ratio between the pressure maxima and the pressure minima not as infinity as it should be according to our theory but it will be more like 10 in very good experiments tightly sealed and very nice experiments you could perhaps get 20 for a low, low diameter tube but uh, yeah so this is uh, in practice there is a 3D radiation field outside and, and that is what is uh, creating this. In, in, a, in So the same thing with a closed pipe, in a closed pipe 
again you won't get this maxima to minima of infinity the ratio but you'll get something around 10 or 20 the reason being i think 10 is more realistic 20 is if you have a set up really carefully uh, the reason is the n will i mean whatever you put it will have some level of vibration and then some ceiling problems and, and so on okay well, you had a question for the open tube yeah. and then the closed tube yeah frequencies coming identical yeah so the uh, that, that is absolutely right because in the open tube you fit a wave if you look at the pressure uh, distribution in an open tube let's take the uh, first mode so it will be this so pressure versus x and for the uh, closed tube it would be so this is open and this is closed so in either case you will see that uh, for the fundamental you have half a wavelength fitted into the duct only thing is offset by um, a quarter wavelength so both case you should get the same answer so it's perfectly fine that you are getting the same answer somebody else had a question here yeah well, you are connected to an infinite reservoir. So, uh, if so, uh, if the pressure is uh, let's say higher here, so uh, the expansion waves are keeping on coming inside, and they are trying to make the pressure equalize. So, if this world had been only, it would really be uh, one atmosphere, but in reality it is complex. So, there is some delay and so on and it cannot perfectly go to zero, but within our theoretical framework this is probably the best condition that we can impose. Well, not quite, um, you can, so people measure the radiation efficiency and the impedance at the boundary so that you can actually for every frequency you can measure the impedance and then you can impose a condition uh, u prime minus uh, uh, oh no <coughs> p prime over u prime equal to z or p prime minus z u prime equal to 0. Uh, so, you could uh, impose a boundary condition of this form and z is z of omega because as I mentioned uh, what is being reflected or what is being lost is a function of frequency, uh, uh, high frequencies uh, radiate very efficiently uh, which I think from a music L instruments you can uh, clearly see that uh, I mean the bass sounds are hard to pick up and hard to uh, uh, how to uh, get it out right whereas high frequency it is quite easy and, and, and so on. So, high frequency radiates out, low frequency does not radiate out very easily. So, low frequency gets reflected very well. So, in any case that the impedance is a function of frequency. So, you could impose a boundary condition of this form and uh, also the reflection does not exactly happen at the end, it may be a little bit inside because you know when you start propagating as 3D, you could think of it as being waves emanating from here. So, there is an end correction uh, for the length of the duct that means the place where you impose the boundary condition and also the boundary condition itself. So, you can get better results, but what I taught is like the simplest form which is still reasonably useful. Any other questions? Okay. So, if the, uh, you do not have any other questions, I have some questions. Uh, so, we wrote uh, pressure and velocity as uh, f, uh, I mean in terms of f and g. So, can you write, so I am sorry, we, yeah. Can you write f and g in terms of pressure and velocity? So, let us say uh, we write it slightly different way uh, g and q prime equal to. So, what, what would be the left and right turning wave in terms of pressure and velocity? Yeah, right. So, uh, f equal to half of p prime over rho c plus u prime and g equal to half of uh, p prime over rho c minus u prime. So, these are 
Rayman invariance you must have studied Rayman invariance in gas dynamics it is like u plus 2 a over gamma minus 1 equal to constant and u, u minus 2 a over gamma minus 1 equal to constant. So, if you make the simplifications that we made for getting the acoustic equations those Rayman invariants will boil down to this ok. So, these are Rayman invariants. So, when you speak about Rayman invariants in acoustics we are speaking about f and g, but in gas dynamics which is um, <coughs> non linear acoustics uh, both are can be used interchangeably. Uh, you, you, your Rayman invariants are uh, u plus 2 a over gamma minus 1 and u minus 2 a over gamma minus 1. Is clear? So, what are the characteristics in gas dynamics corresponding to this invariance? Here we know the characteristics they are dx over dt equal to plus or minus c corresponding to each of them. Corresponding to f it is plus c and g is minus c. What is the invariant for gas dynamics? I mean general high amplitude non-linear wave propagation, it is dx over dt is u plus or minus c huh? and uh, there the u stands for the total velocity. So, when you are having non-linear acoustics we cannot really write the equation in terms of you could write in terms of fluctuation, but fl uh, the solutions do not add up. So, anyway here the dx over dt is the total u plus Now, uh, let us, uh, so we looked at standing waves, we will try to make a plot of the standing waves and uh, uh, look at the amplitude and phase. Let us uh, just look at a simple case of quarter wave tube, you can do the rest for other, uh, other waves. So, fundamental wave would be this way and maybe the uh, next harmonic may look something like this and then another one would be and, and so on. And you know the natural frequency c over uh, c, uh, c over 4 L, 3 c over 4 L and 5 c over 4 L. Now, how would the phase go? So, this is uh, Now, in uh, those of you studied vibrations, the way they plot the amplitude is different, they actually draw this thing on the negative side also, right. The mode shapes, when they plot the mode shapes, they actually um, draw pictures of the following form. They would actually draw things like this, but in acoustics, we do not do that. And there is a uh, historic reason also. When you look at vibrations, you can see the beam go up and down like this, whereas in acoustics, we really do not see anything. So, what we see is if you plug in a pressure uh, a microphone to measure the acoustic pressure, you see the pressure going up and down. So, we have a uh, in the computer or any data acquisition system, what you will get is amplitude and phase. So, people plot the amplitude and plot the, plot the phase. So, people get a feel in a certain uh, different manner. So, if you look at phase, how would the phase go for example, this one, this uh, pink colored one. What happens to the phase at a minima? So, I, I will give the answer. For example, if I look at this, the phase will stay constant here and then it will change by, so this is phase, uh, change by 180 degree across this minima and then again stay constant. And uh, is it possible to imagine this or see it from your solution? Yeah, what is it? So, phase actually means if you have, uh, if you look, if you look at this uh, pressure here. Now, the amplitude is this way, but here the pressure may be going up, here it may be coming down. So, that would mean a phase difference of 180 degree. Now, if this is going up and that is also going up, it is 0. So, that means if it is constant, that means every part of the wave will be rising in pressure till this point and then from this point, every part of the wave will have pressure fall 
and uh, and in the case of a perfect uh, standing wave like in quarter wave tube uh, it is actually abrupt 180 degree and can you try to look at the equation and see uh, whether you can get it. So what was our uh, solution for the standing wave? Huh? For this uh, um, closed open pipe. Yeah. So let's do it here. P prime equal to P hat e power i omega t, which is 2a cos kx into e power i omega t. But as I mentioned that this implicit in writing this e power i omega t is the fact that we have to take the real part. So we got a real number for k, so cos kx is a real number. So our um, actual, so let me do this. So this is like 2a cos kx cos omega t. So what will be the value of kx at the standing wave minima? Ah, so kx equal to pi over 2. So uh, kx, my, uh, so we can think of kx minus equal to pi over 2 minus delta and the kx plus as pi over 2 plus delta. So uh, cos kx minus would be cos pi over 2 minus delta and this would be and cos kx plus equal to cos pi over 2 plus delta this is equal to minus sin delta which is nothing but Uh, no, we leave it there. Now, uh, so we need to write uh, cos kx cos omega t. So this would be, uh, one second. In one case, it will be sin uh, kx cos omega t. So this would be the uh, um, P prime minus would be this, P prime plus would be uh, no, sin delta here, sorry, minus sin delta cos omega t, which is sin delta into cos omega t plus 180 degree. So it is, this is algebraically consistent because if you think of this place, pressure, uh, uh, if pressure is going up here, it will be coming down, if this is going up, that will be coming down. So that is the meaning of phase. Now uh, maybe we should again harp on what is the meaning of uh, complex pressure amplitude and, and so on. Are we, uh, have you thought about it seriously? Why should uh, P hat have a phase and why should P hat be complex or what are the implications? What, what does this complex number denote? I mean, pressure is after all some real thing, right? So where, where is this complex thing coming from? So is there anything complex about complex number? Is there anything imaginary about imaginary numbers? What is imaginary about imaginary numbers? Complex numbers is just the oscillating behavior. Yeah. So there is nothing imaginary about uh, a imaginary number. It's just uh, imaginary numbers. Uh, are as real as real numbers except that we, we need uh, two quantities. So if you say uh, A plus IB, it is just two numbers A and B. It is like an ordered pair in the R2 space. Uh, just like if you have one number, it is in the R1 space. So it is the same kind of notation as what you would do when you have a uh, vector notation. So for example, if you write A I plus BJ. We do not think as this is imaginary or complex or anything. We just think that 
to de to de describe something in a plane we need two coordinates one in this direction one in that direction so so anything in a plane we can describe with two quantities so instead of calling j as j they call it um, i is equivalent to 1 comma 0 and uh, your j is equivalent to 0 comma 1 this we normally call 1 this is called uh, i the um, imaginary number which is square root of minus 1 so there is really nothing imaginary about imaginary numbers at all so now the question comes as to if you were measuring with a microphone let's say uh, you bring a mic they are having microphones in these cameras and what is it measuring it is measuring the real part of p hat or absolute value of p hat or what is it huh any other real part. real part anything else absolute value absolute value absolute value actually none of the above uh, it's very interesting <laughs> so let's expand out uh, the complex numbers uh, I will follow the notation in the book, so I need my glasses to see what I wrote. Okay. So, p prime. Okay, that's what we are interested in. That is what the microphone measures. Every instant, the microphone is listening. So, what we listening is really not an average value. At every instant in time, it is listening. Only thing is, it's fixed in space. Okay, is it that clear? So, p prime. It's actually p prime of x and t. Okay, so we are measuring at one particular x. If you want to measure at several locations, you need several microphones. That is for clear. So x is fixed for a given microphone, and t is continuously varying. So I will just put a wiggle under it to denote that uh, the microphone is fixed in a space or something like that. Mm. But in principle, you can get the field in uh, field by adding by keeping various microphones. So uh, uh, so this is nothing but by definition we said p hat of x times e power i omega t. So this let us write in terms of the familiar real and imaginary parts and then see what we can get. This is p hat real of x plus i, no, we don't, i times p hat imaginary of x times um, e power i omega t is cos omega t plus i sin omega t. Now, do we need to evaluate this entire expression? No, we just need to look at the real part of this. So, because we, we, it is always implicit that we are taking real part of this thing. So, this is real part of this thing. But if you work, if you are too smart and if you take real part of p hat, of uh, uh, then there is a problem. Because we see you get a real part by multiplying this and this. But you also get the real part by multiplying this and this. Now, is that some mathematical thing which is not physical or is it something physical to it? Let us take a look. So, we will uh, write out this expansion. So, this is So, this is the real part. You can also write the imaginary part as i times p hat of imaginary x cos omega t plus p real times sin omega t. Now, there is nothing glorious about taking the real part. You could have rigged up the subject such that the imaginary part denotes the uh, actual pressure also. Anything is possible, but this is what is followed in convention. So, now we have an imaginary part, and what is so imaginary about imaginary thing, or can we get some? reality out of this imaginary thing. So, that is the next step. So, if you do this high school algebra, we can write this as p real squared x plus p imaginary squared of x. And when I mean by p real squared of x, it actually means p real times. Um, so, it, it, it just means you take the real part of p r and then square it. That is all. So, times 
P real at f x cos omega t divided by the same thing P r squared of x plus so if I forgot my hat somewhere I am sorry minus P imaginary x uh, sin omega t divided by the same factor P r squared plus P in square plus the hats. Now you see this factors this factor over here and this factor over here. What is so unique about that? So if you square this factor and square this factor, what do they add up to? 1. So therefore, you can think of this as cos and that as sin or vice versa. I mean you are perfectly legitimate in thinking of one thing as sin and one thing as cos if they are squares add up to 1 because you have the identity sin squared theta plus cos squared theta equal to 1. So this could be thought of as equal to P real square. cos omega t cos phi minus sin omega t sin phi. This can be written as root of p hat star denotes the complex conjugate. So, this P a complex number you to get to get its magnitude you multiply it by its complex conjugate then you get the square of the magnitude multiplied by cos omega t plus v. And the phi can be written as uh, tan phi equal to So uh, we saw that this waves can be written as uh, for any traveling wave we need a uh, or any wave we need a phase because what does the phase denote? We always start our clock at some time t equal to 0. For example, today's class we started at 8 o'clock and then we put the clock at 0 there. Uh, uh, so when, when is your reference time? When is the reference in 0? So uh, that is what it is. So here we our daily reference is at midnight it is 12 o'clock or something like that. So like that you can keep a reference and so without that we cannot uh, write when you when you describe a wave with a function we always need a, a reference as to when the time starts. So that is what the phi denotes and the complex equation uh, the complex notation is just another way of expressing this. The, so they are completely equivalent writing something as some a cos omega plus omega t plus phi that is all that is is same as writing something as uh, p hat of x e power i omega t of course implicit in this is the fact that we have to take uh, real part of this. So now is it clear uh, what is phase? So this phi is same as the phase of this complex amplitude. So complex amplitude is a complex number and its phase is same as phase of this wave cos omega t plus phi. Now one more thing to denote is if you write a computer program it is important to use the command a tan 2 because tan can have 2 values and, and therefore you can get into mistakes. So please remember to use a tan 2 or the, whatever is that uh, command uh, a tan 2 of this these 2 quantities you do not give the ratio because you can have uh, in 2 quadrants the same value ok. Any questions at this? Is it clear what is phase now? So. So when the phase changes by 180 degree that means uh, in one place it is some value times cos omega t, the other place it is some value times minus cos omega t that means it will go up or down by the same value ok. Any questions? No. Clear? 
Uh, we uh, talked about acoustic waves and uh, we said that we have uh, particles moving as well as the wave itself moving and there is phase speed and the particle motion. So there is particle displacement also right, what is, how do you dis relate particle displacement to particle velocity, In, uh, for example for a, uh, for a harmonic wave. So let us say uh, what is particle velocity, so this is particle so if you now think of this as u hat e power i m a k t let us say as a harmonic function is So the particle displacement is goes like particle velocity divided by i omega. So for the uh, higher frequencies for the same acoustic velocity you will get a lower particle displacement. Any questions? Any questions? No. So in the last class we said that we need some kind of measure for the energy and uh, if no energy is coming in or no energy is going out this measure or the energy will stay constant, if energy is going out the, and, uh, if, the, if there is some flux going out of the acoustic power, if acoustic power is radiated out then the energy will come down, if the acoustic power is coming in energy will go up. So we need to write some kind of expression between acoustic energy and acoustic power that is coming in or out through the boundaries. In reality there can be other ways in which acoustic power can be generated, you can have acoustic power being uh, generated by uh, chemical reactions that is the combustion instability or you can have aerodynamics ways of generating it like the um, vortex shedding and so on, so there is aerodynamics on. We will come to those things later but we will look at uh, just the acoustic power flowing in or flowing out through the boundaries. How do we do this? Do we derive a new equation, uh, how do you start, what is your idea? Hmm. Momentum equation? You dot uh, velocity, ah. you can get an energy equation. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we need some kind of expression for the energy and I uh, told yesterday that if you think of it as a dynamical system then its norm of the system should go like energy 2 norm. Uh, but if you do not want to think of that that way also that is fine. Uh, so what we can do is we can we need to come up with a expression for energy and when we it should be uh, how to come up with is it is quite easy for acoustic these equations but anything more the more complexities you bring in even a simple mean flow bringing in if you bring in a simple mean flow this will complicate the equations quite a lot and we will see that later. But uh, we need uh, two expressions one is uh, uh, one part should correspond to what are the energies in it. So energy is like a measure of whatever is there in the system and uh, if, if you do not take away or put in energy it should stay constant that is the idea. So what are the two components to acoustic energy, kinetic energy and potential energy. So we should have those two things, so kinetic energy should go like u squared and potential energy should go like p squared okay. So we have to keep these things in mind and try to derive it, so let us uh, let us do that. So uh, as Rajesh pointed out Euler equation or the momentum equation, we are, we are always writing the linearized versions, so this will be rho bar 
do u by do t plus do p by do x equal to 0 and I must remember to put my primes but in case I forget I think that is okay. <laughs> so we multiply this with u prime. So if it was a vector equation as Rajesh mentioned we would take a dot product with, with u. Uh, if not, I mean here it says, I mean we are just writing one component, so it is like a scalar equation, so I just multiply by u prime. So this would be, uh, and let me, yeah, okay. Now let me write the equation for uh, continuity equation which is do rho prime by do t plus rho bar do u prime by do x equal to 0. So what we do is to, uh, we had a relationship between uh, the density fluctuations and the pressure fluctuations, what was it? Yeah, so let us replace this by. P prime over C square, right? This is okay. So now let us uh, multiply this by uh, P prime. So what you would get is do do T of half P prime squared over C squared plus rho bar P prime x equal to 0. So let me just bring this uh, row bar to the bottom here, okay. So now let me add these two terms. So let me call this equation as star and call this as star star. So I can add star plus, add these two equations. I will get do by do t of p prime squared over 2 rho bar c squared plus half rho bar u prime squared plus I will get p prime du prime by dx plus uh, u prime do p prime by do x equal to 0. Now uh, this term can be recast as d by dx of p prime u prime. So let us do that. p prime u prime equal to 0. So this is now looking quite physical. So uh, what would this quantity be? This is like our measure or energy. In fact, uh, half rho bar u prime squared if you multiply it by like a dv delta volume that would be like kinetic energy of uh, I mean a yeah, kinetic energy of that a certain mass of gas right like it is like half mv squared if you, you just have to multiply rho bar times some volume then um, so <coughs> Let us call W as half rho bar u prime squared plus p prime squared over 2 rho bar c squared. So this would be acoustic energy, it is a, it's a def by definition, so this is acoustic energy. Now uh, this would mean that, uh, uh, what is the physical meaning of this? Uh, so there is some uh, quantity here and its rate, time rate of change depends on uh, p prime u prime, its derivative. Now you can get a more physical uh, 
meaning for this if you actually integrate this equation and use uh, what is Gauss theorem and write it. Now, uh, so in first let us write this in vector form, let me call this as uh, uh, that as W the acoustic energy. So, then in, in the vector form this would be dou W by dou T plus del dot P u, here u is the vector equal to 0, where w would then be half rho bar u dot u which is like kinetic energy plus half p prime squared over rho bar c squared. And uh, p u is called acoustic intensity vector. Now, if I were to integrate this over the control volume, so let us integrate this over a control volume and let us assume that the control volume is really uh, not distorting or anything, it is just a fixed control volume, then it is easy to do the integration, even otherwise you get the same results, but I will keep it simple. So, you can also swap the derivatives and say. And what happens to this integral? This will, this can be converted from a volume integral to surface integral by Gauss theorem. C s means control surface equal to 0. So, now there is some physical thing to it. Uh, P u is actually called acoustic intensity and acoustic intensity over a surface would be the acoustic power ok. I will pass for a minute to you can. So, the this equation means that the time rate of change of acoustic energy inside the control volume is equal to the intensity flux in minus intensity flux out across the con control surface or the power in minus power out, uh, power flow in minus power flow out that is what it physically means. So, the uh, time rate of change of acoustic energy that is here, this plus uh, the power in minus power out should be. 0 or should be conserved. So, this is the conservation of acoustic energy. Is the physical meaning quite clear? I think you can note this down. Maybe I will write it. or the net power in. And I also want to draw upon your attention to note that this acoustic intensity is a vector, but power is like a scalar. 
okay, because it is intensity you are saying i dot n d s that is power. So, uh, one key thing to notice is that we did not evoke any new conservation laws, this was consistent with the conservation laws which we already used which are conservation of mass and momentum and uh, the isentropic equation that we used a p prime over c square equal to rho prime we did not use anything new and we manipulated them and uh, and the re the way it was scaled was such that we see we could have multiplied by any other constant also uh, but we wanted this p prime d u prime by d x and u prime d p prime by d x to come into a flux kind of form. So, we wanted like a del dot p prime u prime term then you can rewrite in terms of a surface integral. So, that was the reason which with which the scaling is done and then we integrated it to get the equation in this form. So, uh, this if you remember the equations the way I wrote it in the state vector form uh, this would be like the norm of the state vector that is available uh, and uh, what else. Yeah, so it, it, this was kind of a not so difficult exercise or fairly trivial exercise for uh, the uh, acoustic uh, energy in the absence of mean flow in the absence of any inhomogeneities and so on. But the moment there is flow then uh, and inhomogeneities this exercise gets really complicated and the there is no uh, uh, there are three waves which are coupled together acoustics, entropy and vorticity and they are completely decoupled if there is no flow and everything is constant, but the moment there is flow those things will be coupled and even so uh, there is uh, quite a bit of debate on what is the expression you should use for acoustic energy and this it is still ongoing research topic towards the end of the class we will have some look at it, but at the moment. I wish to say that it is a really complex and deep equation and one more warning I should say when we write pressure and velocity we write in terms of complex quantities and they are first order quantities, but acoustic energy is a second order quantity. So, we should not write that in terms of complex quantities you will you will be much better off taking the p prime and u prime as it is and writing expression for that rather than deal with the complex numbers because you know you have square quantities and then everything is uh, messed up. Uh, so, uh, I think I will stop here for today. Is there any questions you can ask me? Any questions? Yes, please. Secondly, where they should be doing which part of the analysis is that they should be in uh, We found that along the characteristics dx over dt equal to plus c, uh, the pressure would be constant. So, something that is constant, invariant is another word for it. Now, why is it so that is that is a characteristic of a wave if you think uh, the two ways you can think of if you think of it mathematically we have a hyperbolic differential equation and it will have uh, <coughs> characteristic lines along which certain invariance exists that is a property of the hyperbolic differential equation or you can uh, hy hyperbolic PDs gives you a direction along which something will stay invariant that is the uh, crux of the matter of hyperbolic uh, PD. Uh, I, I I think you can look at math books. Now, physically what does this invariant mean? If you have a wave a wiggle and if there is a wave going to the right I mean any wiggle will transport itself to the right or left or whatever. So, when it is moving a left running wave or a right running wave it will just preserve the wave shape and keep on going in a one dimensional sense. If it is three dimensional then of course, you will have this 1 over r d k and so on. So, but a wave it will if it is propagating this side it will just keep looking like this and it would not change at all. If the same wave is moving to this side it will just have whatever is the wiggle and it will move to that side. So, what is invariant the wave itself is invariant. So, whatever is moving to the left will continue to move to the left it is only just translated it does not get expanded or change in amplitude or anything under quiescent conditions things may be different when temperature is non uniform as you pointed out. Uh, so, the uh, just the way the whole wave structure is invariant if for the left turning and right turning wave and, and that is the uh, I mean there is nothing which can make it spread. For example, if you had non uniform temperature the uh, front part of the wave if, if you are going into a uh, uh, region with higher temperature the front part of the wave will travel faster than the back part and that will run away. So, it will just relax expand 
and if you are going to cold medium the back part of the wave will catch up with the uh, front part. So, it will wave will steepen. In fact, if you have a uh, uh, if, if it is a finite amplitude wave for example, not acoustic wave, but a, like a shock, like a uh, higher amplitude uh, then even for a uniform medium uniform temperature uh, as the front part goes it is like a shock and it heats up a compression wave heats up and the back part will tend to catch up because it is seeing a higher propagation velocity and eventually it will form a shock. So, then once you have nonlinear acoustics you do not have this invariance property at all the wave can change shape, but when you have a quiescent medium and there is no inhomogeneity and so on then there is nothing in it which can actually uh, disturb the shape of the wave in any disturbance in pressure or velocity will propagate as expansion wave or compression wave isentropic waves left and right. So, that is what it is physically mathematically you are guaranteed a, a, a solution and if you think about uh, nonlinear acoustics with higher amplitudes and so on you still have a hyperbolic differential equation and you still have a characteristics uh, d x over d t is u plus or minus c and there also you have invariant 2 a over gamma minus 1 uh, plus u is, is, is constant, but it is you cannot write in terms of simple pressure wave and uh, velocity waves because the pressure as I mentioned the pressure wave can and velocity wave can steepen or relax and so on, but this full thing is invariant ok. Any other question? Did it answer you? Okay, so we'll stop here.